Welcome to Coffee with Braz, where I get to chat to some of the best athletes we have playing in Australia. This week, we'll be talking to one of my teammates, Shimona Nelson. Meet the girl that has all the sass in our team. She sings, she dances, she even poses. Shimmy is one of a kind. Come game day though, she is the ultimate weapon. Strong, powerful, aerial. All I have to do is throw the ball in the air. Meet the player that makes me look good. Welcome, Shimmy, to Coffee with Brats. Thank you so much. Welcome, Hatika. Oh, thank you for welcoming me. First person to actually welcome me to my yes. own show. It's <laughs> of course it's you, of course it's you. That's okay. Now, first up, what is your coffee order? Hot chocolate girl. You know I don't like coffee as much. That's a lie. I don't have coffee all the time, but it's just hot chocolate for me, darling. Yeah. Well, you again, another first for the show. You're the first person not to have a coffee. The first person to have a hot chocolate. <laughs> Why don't you drink coffee that often? Um, It gives me a different vibe. Like normally it will like make you guys stay awake. For me, it <laughs> makes me sleep. Stop and it. that's not really ideal. Also, I had it before a game and it made me shake like crazy so I'm not gonna have it ever again before a game and that's also the reason why I don't have coffee yeah. that's another reason why I don't have coffee <laughs> yeah well though if it makes you fall asleep you could have one just before bed you know like knock out but what if it makes me awake though yeah it makes you shaky yeah. I don't know mm, that's why I stay away <laughs> if you are to have a coffee like because I know you sometimes do drink coffee what what would you order um, a cappuccino or a almond latte. Oh, almond latte. Yes, girl, yes. And cap- <laughs> cappuccino, obviously, because it's still got the chocolate in <laughs> <Yes>. it. Yes. <laughs> very smooth, very smooth. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about Jamaica. Yes. I want to know what it was like growing up in Jamaica, because for me, I've never been to Jamaica. Yeah. I was somewhere I, I would love to go. Mm. Um, what was it like growing up in Jamaica? Oh, it was so good, girl. Like, for me, because... I do grow up in the countryside slash city side because yeah. where and wh- I grew what's up- that like though? Because our country, obviously, like if you go middle of Australia, it's desert. If you go like central, it's tropical. If you go, I guess south, like it's, like it's country. Dry. Yeah, yeah. So what's Jamaica like? is different. So when you say country, like you have like heaps of greenery, like a few houses here and there, so like they're spaced out. Um, so like yeah, it's kind of similar to yours, but like not so orangey. It's really yeah. green, <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's heaps of fruit trees there. Like there's heaps of farming done in the countryside, mainly in the countryside. So yeah. yes, um, that's like partly what what happened to my countryside, and also I attended uni and high school in the city slash Kingston. That's yeah. what we know it as. Um, but Is mainly, it the city's Kingston? Yes, yeah. yes. So. That's where I attended uni and high school. I just said that anyways. Um, yeah. So growing up in the country was so good. You were just like free, like a headless chick. You could go everywhere. <laughs> but one thing with Jamaicans that like, grew up in the country, we always love to climb trees, roll around in the dirt. We always play like cricket, like cricket in the dirt. We're always in the rain, like especially when it rains. Yeah. We get heaps of whooping from our parents because yeah. <laughs> we're not supposed to be in the rain and we're outside in the rain, like it's heaps of mud and the mud's red. So if you go outside, like for example, in a gray outfit, you go back home in red, red. or like totally dirty. But I enjoyed growing up in the countryside because I was able to like get bruises, be able to live outside, yeah. not like how nowadays is like heaps of technology and stuff. Like, I genuinely do miss my childhood. Yeah. So, and if do I were reckon, to live it again, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> and so, do you reckon like you talk about technology being the reason now why we stay inside? Yeah. If you were to go back to Jamaica, what you know as growing up as a child, does that still exist? Or are we now seeing kids in Jamaica as well inside because of that? Kids are mostly inside because, like, I can definitely relate to that because I have two nephews yeah. and they're all inside. You can hardly see them outside, which is so not good because, like, when I was their age and my sister and I were that age, we were outside giving our parents heaps of trouble, like, yeah. like playing with our neighbours and, like, calling us to come in. It was like, we soon come, that's how we say it. But we soon come. Yeah, we soon come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not now. Yeah. But not now. And like, as like when we get here, we get like heaps of whooping because yeah. we didn't come home, we didn't come in on time. But now, like, 
you can be like, hey, here's a tablet. You can stay in the entire house for the entire day. But yeah. like, that's not good because you And now parents be... actually want their kids outside. Yes, to go yeah. outside. Yeah, come back and... dirty, we're okay. <laughs> I don't care if you come back red. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, it's like how the world has evolved. It's totally different now to what I had back then because I appreciated every single thing back then. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess like it's not just Jamaica. Like that's no. the world that we're in now. Yeah. Like, like I'm the same as you. I was a country kid and my brother and I like we just got kicked out of the house to be <laughs> kicking a footy or getting yeah. like playing basketball or anything like that. Mm. Um, but what sport did you play? Because I know netball came later on yeah. in life. Like yeah. what sport did you play growing up? So growing up um, in primary school, we didn't do, do much sport because where I attended school um, – sport wasn't as recognized there the only thing that they did was like track and field and you girl ain't gonna do no running that age and especially my parents they'd be like get your ass home um (laughs) but then i started in high school so that's where i started doing track and field and volleyball and basketball so i was so All over the let's, place. Let's talk about track and field first. <laughs> so you, track and field, volleyball and basketball. But with track and field, mm. what what events would you – like what did you like the so most? So I would do high jump and yeah. – Oh, no wonder scat. you can jump so high. <laughs> <laughs> I think the basketball kind of added a bit yeah. to what you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, um, I did those. Long then, jump? I know. Just high jump as you think. Yeah. Yeah. So um, – what I decided to do was in high school was to drop um, discuss and high jump and just focus on basketball because I felt like it was like for me it was more involved with everyone. It's just like like a one person thing. Like yeah. it's a team and I love being around everyone. Yeah. You know me, girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and is basketball but, big in Jamaica? Um, no, not at the moment. So yeah. it's mainly like track and field, soccer, cricket netball in the line there and then potentially basketball there are yeah. other sports that we do in jamaica but it's not recognized yeah. as to that level yeah. there is swimming because of alia atkinson's but it's not like out there for us it's not yeah. like really supported at 110 percent, just like track and field and soccer yeah so yeah um thinking year nine no year eight sorry i dropped discuss and high jump and it was yeah. all basketball throughout yeah um i picked it up back when i was in uni so yeah. julian robinson that was for my discus coach and um i think it was ricketts mr ricketts for my uh high jump man i usually love training for discus because like all you do is just throw a discus you don't have to jump <laughs> so i like very in training i was like oh i have to go training here i have to go training there but what mainly made me go to uni early at age 17 was because of netball scholarship and also academics. So yeah. I had both options. Yeah. So my main sport was netball there, but then I decided to do extras because you know me, girl. Yeah. Um, I did extras, then um, I just got better and better and better and better at timing. So, so that's why I was able to pick up this cast and high jump. Yeah. Uh, training was really quite intense because for netball netball. because we train in the morning and then in the afternoon we'll have to do gym so what I would do was like I train in the morning I did my weights after my netball session then I did my classes during the day and by 5 36 I'm in the gym doing my jumpers program and my discus program. So that's yeah. two in one. Yeah. And then I have to go to my high jump and discus throwing. So where do you, where does basketball fit in? So I didn't do basketball for that year. Yeah. So that year I was just trying to find my feet when I picked up discus yeah. and high jump. Yeah. So... <laughs> So basketball came in later, like I guess later again, because then you started playing in America. Yes. So um, actually, no, because while I was still in high school, I actually played in the States because, you know, once we have the summer, that's when we go up and play. So I was still playing during that time. So in uni, I decided to drop high jump to do basketball and continued from there and I got a scholarship to go to University of Illinois, which I was working hard for I didn't really see myself doing netball because I was like I don't know how to play netball 
yeah. but it's like when I got when like when I got invited for the first time for um, Barbados Dry Series, um, I heard them talk about Janelle Fowler and Romelda Aiken. So I was like, okay, I don't know who's that, but I'll just do my research. Just don't ask. Yeah. So I just got thrown into deep end. I did what I could because of my basketball application, and then I got turned up. Well, sorry, I got an opportunity to play netball in Australia. So my first contact. And how, how did that come along? Because like you're talking about you got to train at yep. uni, but you had no idea what this sport was. You didn't yep. feel comfortable with it. Basketball is your main thing. So mm. you haven't really stepped into like the netball world to prove yourself. Mm. Where did So how did the opportunity come along? So that opportunity came along when I was um, playing... Uh, Barbados Dry Series in Jamaica. So the Barbados team came over and I think Janelle and Romelda weren't available. So I was the next go-to. So I, was, I grabbed it with both hands. I was like, yes, I'm going in there. Because yeah. <laughs> I've never played at a national level for my country before. So yeah. it was like a well overwhelming thing. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to yeah. be in black, green and gold. I'm like, I'm going to have that same dress as everyone else. Like. Just like having that feeling of, wow, I, I'm playing for my country. It's yeah. like mind blowing. But yeah. I think I had to tone it down a bit because it was getting to game time. Yeah. Um, that happened. I played both series, three series, all three series I played along with Chantel Slater because like we had to interchange because, you know, girl. <laughs> I'm still, I was still new to it. Yeah. And you're still, you were still pretty young. Yes, I was. Um, then I think it was like a week or two after I got a message on Facebook from Todd. Yeah. He was like, um, I don't remember the exact thing, but the only thing I could remember was um, we're looking for a shooter to replace Cat 2 EYT for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. I was like, what's that? <laughs> And he was like, netball. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, um, just give me a few So you're weeks. talking about Todd Miller here. Um, Todd Andrews from New, New Zealand? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I don't know the last yeah. name. I just I know Todd. Todd Miller. Yeah, and one of Jane's friends? Yes. Yeah. So people who don't know who Todd is, he is currently in New Zealand. He's worked for Sky Sports. You can tell him... Ask him any question about what year, who played in the grand final, who what played this position. He knows everything. And he's currently a scout for, I guess, anyone who yeah. wants to know anything about netball. So yeah. he obviously saw you, which is massive mm. for him to even know that, you, I guess, you had that opportunity. So yeah. that's great. And Kat Tuviati, um, who's also known as Kat Latu, she was the Adelaide Thunderbirds goal shooter at yeah. the time who was just coming back from an ACL. Mm -hmm. Also... Um, national New Zealand netballer, um, one of my favourite players. So yeah. massive to step in for, um, into her shoes. Yeah, because as I said before, I was like totally new. Everything just like handed to me. It was just like I needed to make the right decision then and there because then I was um, offered a basketball scholarship to University of Illinois. Yeah. At the same time? At the same time. Oh. So my head was like going around like crazy because I had to talk to my mom about it. And also I had to talk about Keith, I had to talk to Keith about it. That was the person that was really close to me then. So he was like, okay, here are the options. What's best for you? What's gonna challenge you? What's gonna push you forward? What's gonna make your life better? Mm -hmm. You need to sit and make that decision for yourself. So I was like, okay, I wanna be a WNBA player. I want to be able to study as well and I want to be able to like live life as basically. So um, when I made my evaluations, going to University of Illinois wasn't the best of choice. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to Australia. Yeah. My mom's like, you do know that's on the other side of the world. I was like, <laughs> I never thought about it that yeah. way. <laughs> That's a long flight. A very long flight. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go. Um, 
new challenge. It's okay. I'm still young. I still have heaps of opportunity. So don't be too down on yourself and be like, oh, you made the wrong decision. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take it with both hands. Yeah. All the opportunities that come, I'm going to have to work hard for those. So um, I decided to come to Adelaide. Um, and how, were you, how old were you, Shimmy? I was 18. Yeah, which is a massive call to make <laughs> at 18. And especially because yes. like netball's still so new. Yes, it was. And it was still new. That year I had to, I had another opportunity to represent Jamaica in the Fast Five, which was so good. That's my favourite uh, sport. Yes, oh, we came, five. I think you came second that year. And it was so good to be able to be a part of that moment that I was able to represent my country, even though I wasn't able to take court, I yeah. still represented my country and I did that to the best of my ability. Yeah. And I came home with a silver medal. I was like, wow, yeah. look at me go. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I think we flew back to Adelaide because it was in Melbourne. Yeah. Flew back to Adelaide, my first preseason session with Adelaide. I died. Yeah, I was about to say, how was walk. that? I could not even walk. I was like walking around like an old lady. So at the moment I was staying with um, Emma's parents. That's the chaplain that was there when Dan was there. So I was staying with her, her parents. Man, I could not even get up the stairs properly. <laughs> I had to like use the reels to like help me get upstairs. And my best friend was my bed. So after every training session, I was always look forward to going home yeah like i would not stay get me out of here yes yes but then as soon as i progressed i started to love it more even though it was really challenging to shoot without a backboard so at the moment before i had to like put a coin in between my fingers to know that if i shoot outside it's going to fall out and if i dribble it you know that's not worth it because his coin's supposed to stay in between your fingers, not out. So that's real. That's I've never heard anyone do that before. Yeah. So it was a huge transition for me. I'm still raw at the moment. I have heaps more to give because it's only four years playing netball at this level. I have heaps more to give, which yeah. I know. I yeah. just have to trim a few edges and keep pushing through the hard sessions. Yeah. So oh, yeah. well, you're a weapon, Shim. <laughs> and I think when you get it right, like the the games that you are on no one can stop you yeah. and I think that's the exciting thing that you're still so raw and we're like wow imagine <laughs> this kid's just going to keep getting better and better yeah. and I think that's the most exciting thing yeah but your first year at Adelaide you scored 418 goals yeah so you're an 18 year old first time in Australia you score 418 goals that's incredible Yes, um, yeah it was because <laughs> I did not have an idea that when and you I didn't even play every game. Like you played every game, but you missed quarters. So yeah. it's like that, that is like a player that plays every quarter of every game. Well, now I've been told that I wasn't aware of it because when I was in Adelaide, you know, I wasn't too hard on myself saying I have to get it right. I have to get it right. I was like, it's a process. I need to trust it. I need to not overthink if stuff go wrong. Yeah. I just need to keep going at it. But what helped me to keep going most of the times were my host parents yeah and like they'll waste stuff from court because sometimes court session can be really hard and like when you especially you're so down on yourself because you want to get it right you mm. start to overthink and then it doesn't go well so sometimes that ha do happen to me in training and then like it's my host parents that help me to get back out there and like look you made a decision you're gonna have to stick with it it's gonna be hard but you're gonna do it yeah and like and are you still close with them? Because yes. they sound like pretty <laughs> special people. Yes, they are. So Mark and Robin. So they're both Christians and like they're so good. Like I never knew I would have loved Australia. It was because of them. Because yeah. I was able to escape stuff and talk about stuff with them and then like they're able to be like, get out of your head, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are like, you doing? Yes, and like and if that doesn't work, like we go on, like, for example, some sort of trips, family trips, and that's be so good because it takes my mind away from netball. And yeah. like, sometimes why am I so hard on myself because yeah. of that? But then like what my host dad always tell me, that's Mark. He's like, you're really still young at this. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be so hard at yourself because you being so hard at yourself, you might end up quitting because you're not succeeding what you set yourself to get. Yeah. 
So and the whole like, thing, like that's my motto, Shim. Like the whole reason we play sport is because we love it. Yeah. Like yep. obviously we now get paid all right, like, mm-hmm. but it's still not enough to do something that you don't love and put your body through it if yep. you don't love it and enjoy it. So yep. as much as like it's hard work, you still need to find like the love in it, I guess. Mm-hmm. So great, I guess, from him to even yeah. pass that on. Yeah, I know. But the grateful thing that I can say thank you to them for is making me aware of what's out there in the world and not yeah. limit myself to only what I know. Yeah. Like they helped me to be open minded. They helped me to plan my life and be an adult on my own. Even yeah. though I had them, they still kick me out and be like, go out, have social yeah. life. <laughs> Get some fresh air, girl. Yeah. yeah. Get away from your best friend's <laughs> event. Yeah. Yes. And I'm so grateful for them. Um, I think my first um, portrait picture, you know, like when you debut, they gave you yeah. like a that photo. Yeah. I gave it to them because oh, that's pretty special. That meant something to me as well as to them because yeah, I wouldn't have been able to meet all them goals without yeah. having such a strong support away from the court. Yeah. So. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so you obviously loved Adelaide. Like yes. you got amazing I actually still am- do. amazing host parents. You played awesome. You scored that four hundred and eighteen goals. You just said then you still love Adelaide. Yeah. Why Collingwood? Well, why at Collingwood? Um, something different. Um, also just giving me that bit of variation to be honest, and also a bit more support. So being able to make that decision, it was quite hard because I didn't know. I was like all about the ifs, like what if I go there and I don't like it? I'm like, what if I stay and I don't like it? It's like all 50-50, but Keith helped me. It was like still as like hard as ever. He was like, look, what do you want? Do you want to play netball longer? Do you want to stay in the same position you are or do you want to be better? Yeah. So I was like, oh Lord, are you so hard? But I was yeah. like, okay, all right. Um, I'll just uh, go have a view at what Collingwood does, what it's like there. So you flew over? Yes. To t- check out the facilities? Yep. And that's when I saw you in the room. I'm not sure who you were talking to, but you were there. And I was a bit timid because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she doesn't know who I am. This is so awkward. <laughs> but yeah, but then like being able to come here, see the facility, the facilities that you guys have, the exposures that you get and like how much more I could be of a better weapon, not Mm. just for myself, but for the team. I'm like, okay, I'm going with it. But then I also, I didn't do it based off pay. That's the thing with me. When I got, when I took this contract, I didn't do it for pay. Yeah, I did it mainly because I wanted something that's different. And because for me, I always challenge myself because I know it's always going to be a better reward in the end. So I was like, okay, I'm going with Colin Yeah. Has then, it lived up to your expectations? Do you feel like you've learnt? Yes. You've added to your game? I've had, like, had heaps added to my game. So that's what I'm not... So I'm happy with your decision? Yes, yes yeah. I'm happy with my decision. I'm uh, happy with your decision. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. You're welcome, my dear. <laughs> You make my job as centre a lot easier. Oh, wow. I know. Because you do it up. Be like, yep, I I'm throw it behind my head <laughs> and I still know that you, you'll get it somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, my first year here is a little timid because, you know, when you change teams, it's like you still have to be able to communicate and not feel like, oh, a bit weird. Mm. Be like, oh, hello. Yeah. Not like that. So I had to challenge myself and be like, look, you need to get out of that. And you need to talk and be you around people who you genuinely care about and who you're going to make a team with. Mm. So I did that in my first year. And that's where you guys know all them sounds that I make. You know what I mean, girl? (laughs) (laughs) I just thought you were speaking another language, but you were just making (laughs) random sounds. I know. Um, That actually helped me to come out of that shell that I was like, oh, I'm afraid to talk up. That helped me to project who I was towards everyone and to know that you can talk to me. Yeah. I'm not going to scare you away. Yeah. I'm timid myself. You timid. Yeah. We have to meet halfway. Yeah. So I decided to get out of that shell 
and talk yeah. to everyone, take everyone's feedback and not be too harsh on myself. Yeah. 2019 was a very good year for me. Yeah. I was like moving from a team that lost all the games to team that win the games. Yeah, and we round made finals. One, like. Yes. I think round one and round 14 were my highlights. Yeah, it was 40, not, 14 was the last game. Hey, that was that's like I've played a lot longer than you, and still yep. to this day, was my favorite game I've ever played in. Like, yes. and I know we won, and Vixens beat us the following round. But that game itself, we obviously had for people that don't know um, that are listening to the podcast, we were. I, I, you say we won heaps of games. We didn't really. <laughs> we won the first few, and then we had a fair few dips. Like we lost a fair few games as well. Well, I say we that to because. Win. Yeah, we needed to win the last four games. Yeah. And going into the last game, our league had changed where you got points for every quarter you won. Yep. And so we had to win every quarter and the, like, the, game and the game to actually make finals, which we hadn't done to date. Mm-hmm. And like that game was so switched on. Like I've never been More so fine. pumped. I'm going <laughs> to overlay photos of us in the YouTube because like you and I, I think, <laughs> celebrated like it was the grand final. We were so pumped. Yes. Um, but I think you talk about them being your favourite games. I reckon those games highlight how good you can be when you're mm. on. Yep, yep. Uh, and which is exciting. Yes. We can ex- get you doing that every <laughs> single game. Like, whew. I know. It's exciting and scary at the same time because I know I'm still raw, which is the scary side. And the exciting side is like, once I trim those rawness down, wow. Like, yeah. it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And like... That's what I'm working for, you know, yeah. big girl. I'm, I'm still waiting for you to do a slam dunk. That's my goal. Oh, girl, the rim's not as sturdy. That's yeah, but just like, issue. just a little like, hold for a second and then like go. Oh. Shimmy will be worth it. It'll be so, the photos will be oh, worth it. I'll think <laughs> just about the, it. What about the last shot of the game? Three seconds to go, boom. Okay. <laughs> All right then. We'll I'll take a, that challenge yeah, on. <laughs> it's on. Sorry, Netball Australia. You are going to have to fix the ring. <laughs> oh no. If that happens, we are replaying this. Yes. But then that means we have to be up by heaps before we do that. Yeah, we'll obviously got, The rims if, might not going to work after that. So. Yeah, that's right. No, I'll we'll do it the last shot and let's like, we'll try and make it where like that will be the winning shot. Okay. <laughs> And then you break the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you break the ring. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. Now, I want to talk about something completely random. Okay. I want to talk about your hair. Oh, girl, that ain't random. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because (laughs) it changes every, like... Two weeks. I don't even reckon two weeks. I reckon there's sometimes you come and you got a new do, and two days later, you got another do. Yeah, that's... the Yes. (laughs) How much time do you put into your hair? Um... Not much. Not much. That's a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. I take that back. That's a lie. (laughs) Jo- um, and let's. How long did Jody take to braid your hair the other day? Five hours. So well, not long. But not much that's, not as, <laughs> that's not as long because they were short. Okay, mm. I have thick natural hair. Now I mean, go yeah. on with this. I like actually like how it is now. Okay, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I do vary my hairstyles. I don't know why. I love like, it. Like, like. I have heaps of variety of hairstyles that I like mm. to try. So that's why I was like, okay, if I have an idea of how I want my hair to do, the next day I'm going to do it. Yeah. I ain't taking it out. I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's why you guys do that. Like, like you guys do look forward to my hairstyles. I'm I like, love it. They keep it's me on exciting. your toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like we're going to come down to a point where I'm like, oh, Shimmy's on because her hairstyle is like this. <laughs> oh, you know, that's so true. Yeah. That is so true. Like, I always make that extra effort to ensure my hair looks good on court because I know my hair feels good. Girl, you know I play good yeah, and I feel good. look good, feel good, play good. <laughs> that's just like the motto of a netballer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, I love that. And going back a bit, you talked about being at uni. Yeah. You're still studying. Yeah. Um, so what are you st- currently studying? I know you're going into something else, but like let's talk about yeah, so time. at the moment I'm studying psychological science. Um, potentially I'd love to change it to biochemistry because yeah. I do like the entire idea of biochemistry, a little bit of physics and IT, but that's a different alley that I love to be in. Yeah. So at the moment I'm just doing psychological science to like build myself up, build my structure as to who I am as a person and how I should be able to um, relate to others, um, and 
like probably just be kind towards others and how I read people's feelings. Yeah. So after netball, what's the goal? Like, what do you want to do? So that's heaps of options because I'm 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 a nerd. So <laughs> sorry to say it like Self that. Self confessed but nerd. I love it. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I hate study. I just don't even do that's it. That's alright. Yeah. But that's why I got you. Yeah, that's true. Need one of us. So um, I'd love to become a sports psychologist, or if I have the potential to be a doctor. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, where? Yes, it's always been um, a dream of mine to become a doctor. Yeah. Um, or my third option is to be a vet. Oh, you wow. know, I love my animals, I know, girl. I know. You're like, <laughs> I worry about you being a vet because I feel like you'll take them all home. Oh, oh I'll probably get too attached though. Yeah. But that's my only fear. But you know, once I be able to work through those, I'll be able to just let them go back. Go, yeah. go. Well, you've now you've now got a cat. You, yes, you got a little hash brown. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about yeah. her. So you adopted her, didn't you? Yes, I did. So hash brown is what you called do whatever she likes. Yeah. So she doesn't like to cuddle. She only like passes you now and then, smells you now and then. You touch her for like probably 10 seconds. That's the longest. You're happy if you get four or five seconds. So she's not really cuddly. I struggle with that. Um, she probably only comes close to you when she's about to sleep. So there's like this part of the lounge that I have that I put her bed. Yeah. That's the only place you can actually cuddle her. Cause like when she falls asleep, that's the only time you'd be able to touch her. Yeah. You can't take her up. <laughs> so she, this is, you're, you're just describing cats, Shimona. Like that is a typical cat. It does what they want, when they want. Wants to be padded when they want to be padded, but yes. when they don't want to be padded, you just do not see them. <laughs> it's their world and that is it. Yeah, that's true. Should have got a dog. also, I'm looking forward to get one of those naked cats. Yeah, this is, this is something <laughs> we, we could talk about. And that's, I want to I wanna change the topic, but still talk about the cats, right? Because one thing about you in your first year at Collingwood, I remember rooming with you. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. And it was like, Everyone who roomed with you the next day was like, I didn't sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> and we're like, and I was like, okay, I haven't had Shimmy yet. I don't, like, maybe she talks the whole time. Anyway, oh, oh, so I'm rooming with Shimona. TV's on. I'm on, like, my bed. All right, it's like 9.30, 10 o'clock. All right, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm like, okay. So you, like, roll over. <laughs> and I'm like, night. Nah. And I'm still watching TV. Finally turn it off. Wake up at like 3 a.m. You are cracking yourself up laughing. Oh, God. Watching like naked cat videos. Yeah. <laughs> at 3 a.m. And we've got a game the next day. <laughs> but, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I just don't know how to explain it, to be honest. Like, I love, like, I could just 3 sit a.m. Look at everyone here that 3 a.m. I can sit here and just watch cat videos and i love it and i could care zero thank god you're a cat person and oh, yeah, a like, cat person yeah, i love cats who too. else is a cat person my cat Richo is a cat person yeah ah uh, i don't know who i met oh my i missing. think that's it that's our limit <laughs> i think Ma- maggie maggie yeah. yes maggie likes all animals so we're yeah, lucky so that's, but she can't do it for yeah. a cat person so yeah. yes <laughs> so do you reckon you'll ever get a, another cat yes yeah, oh, yes. you're gonna end up being the cat lady. That's okay. I probably get a little. <laughs> That's dog. not okay in Australia. I probably get a little dog. You know, like those Maine Coons cat. That's the one I want to get. The one that what the is really it? big ones. Dog, a dog, really no, big dog, a cat, really big cat. Maine Coons. I never heard of it. It's so big. You need to show me a photo. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but they're too fluffy now. I'll probably like trim mine. I get give it oh, a Oh, you just gotta shave it to yeah. show it's a naked cat. <laughs> I probably won't get that though. No. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that surprised me that how expensive those naked cats are. Oh yes, they are. They're like the special so ex- breed. Yes, they they're are. the ugliest things, Shimmy. I've no, ever seen in my life. No, they're not ugly. They're ugly. No, they are not ugly. Oh. They're just like you ugly. and I, but without the fur. <laughs> like they're just skin. You can chow them. Use a towel. Wipe oh, them off. Oh, you shower them. <laughs> yeah, they're just skin. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I love you. Oh, this is like the best conversation I've ever had on oh, coffee with this Brass. This can go for days. <laughs> oh, no, I'm telling you, that's what scares me. We could be talking about naked cats for the whole hour. Like, I know, but then like, oh. what's best that I look forward to <laughs> is dressing them up. 
because you know they're naked. You know you got to cover them with a little tushy down sure. there. It, it's a gap. <laughs> they don't need clothes. I know, but like it is going to get cold yeah. and it's bare skin. So you yeah. have to, you know, keep them warm. Keep them warm. Yes. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you've got hash brown for a starters. Maybe we should oh just God. stick with hash brown for a little bit and see how hash brown goes with you travelling when netball season starts. Oh, I've already started to see signs because when we went to Tassie, I came back. She was like, meow. Then she went to do her own stuff. Yeah. Nothing at all. No, oh, no care. No, no care. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. there we go. Yeah. No love at <laughs> all, Shimmy. All right, maybe you do need another cat just to give you a bit of love. Yes, that's true. I'll probably get a dog. I don't know. Yeah. In between. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've been at the club now. This will be your third season with Collingwood. Yes. And you haven't gone home. So no. you haven't gone back to Jamaica. Um, you're very close with your family. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, now it's harder because we're in COVID, but. Like, I remember asking you the first year, like, oh, are you going to go home for Christmas? And you, you said straight to me, like, no, like, this is my opportunity. I want to try and make Australia home. So I'm ready for 2020. Yeah. How, how are you going? Because it must be pretty tough. Yeah, it has been really tough because knowing back home how the state is with COVID and it's really bad. Is it bad in yes, Jamaica at the moment? It is bad. Yeah. I think the last few days, I think they recorded 800 new cases in 24 hours. Yeah. And that's kind of worrying because yeah. my, my mom's there and my dad and my nephews are there. So it's like, what's going to happen? Because yeah. I know for sure my mom has heart issues yeah. and I don't know what complication that might cost. So yeah. I'm like, ugh. So you just want her to be safe yes, as possible. as yeah. safe as possible. But the and they're taking it seriously? Yes, they are. And my mom's like over there just like, why aren't people listening? Like yeah. they need to be really like selfless at this point and start being like oh yeah i need to get out of the house and like starting to spread it as simple as that um i didn't go home in 2020 20, 2018 sorry yeah oh I you didn't did, go home either in 2018 no because when oh, i wow. came back for fast five that's my third opportunity girl yeah. <laughs> um for fast five i did not go home after yeah. so i stayed here for the entire time i was meant to go home in 2019 but because we had that new zealand thing i couldn't go and i felt like i've already settled here and i shouldn't be moving back and forth so i spoke to my mom and i spoke to my dad she was like it's okay just yeah. stay yeah. Like you could just come 2020. Yeah. And 2020 came. 2020 happened. Oh. The world blew up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't go home. It was really hard. Um, struggled a bit. But then like talking to my mom back and forth and my dad and my nephews, I was like, okay, mm. you guys have it on the control. So. Yeah. And they'd also you- be happy that you're here where yes. it's kind of controlled and contained yes. that they know that their daughter's safe. So I think mm-hmm. that's a good thing for you to remember. Like yeah. that. As a parent now with me, I would just want like, <laughs> if Louis safe, everything's safe? okay. Yeah. 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 So um, didn't go back. Um, my mom was like, it's best you stay because yeah. that's a decision you made. And in tough and hard times, you're going to have to start looking at your future because yeah. your dad and I, we've lived our future. It's your time to live your life. Yeah. Which was which I thought about being in fair, but like, mom, you know I love you, but she's like, you got a life, girl. You need you to live, live it. it. Yes. Yeah. So I was, um, she's like, focus on your future, and what your future holds. We might not be in it for the long term, so you're gonna have to like really start making a bit of sacrifices. I was like, oh, that's uh, not what I want to hear, but okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I stayed here the entire time. Didn't yeah. go back. Still looking forward to go back, but my mom's like, don't rush it. We'll be yeah. here. Just well, don't they sound rush like it. awesome parents. <laughs> and I feel like we actually need to get them over here. Yes. So they can see what Australia's like and yeah. see how their daughter's living. And hopefully when COVID does, I reckon that's something it's we over. talk to the club about. Because yeah. I reckon that's, that'll be massive. Like, yes. You haven't seen them no, in years. In years. Oh, that's massive, Shim. So I think, yeah, that's something I reckon we should all talk about after this and getting yeah. your parents over I reckon it'll be unreal <laughs> um but time i think's up um okay. shimmy I, I have loved listening to your story i honestly could listen to you for hours and hours 
you're a bundle of fresh air for me <laughs> when I'm on the court. Like, I'll, I just love playing with you. You're like my LeBron James. Oh, like stop like I said before, throw the ball <laughs> up. You've got it. You've got my back 24-7. Yeah. You've found your voice on court at training. Um, mm. Don't lose it, girl, because you're, yeah, you're one of the best and I absolutely love you. Thank you, Hatta girl. Nah. And everyone's going to love this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just give me a, how good? Yeah. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah.